Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. This is very, very strange. I've never gotten this one before. I don't know who you are. I don't know how many of you out there are going through this. But somehow, you know for some, some odd way, you know what your purpose is in this life. And you're trying to pursue it. But it's not easy for you because you have certain setbacks. You have had certain hindrances that are making it difficult for you to meet the goal, to meet the mark in order to pass and move on to your purpose. But, but, oh, let me see if I can put it this way. Sometimes you may be sitting in a classroom and you may be struggling to grasp a concept, a mathematical concept. It's just not computing in your mind. So you're struggling over it. While the person next to you, they just, they just whiz it, whiz it left and right. They're whizzing it. Well, okay, that may be difficult for you in order to, because that may be a prerequisite that you have to have in order to get your degree, your credential, whatever it is you're trying to get. And the person next to you is just whizzing it on by. But here's the thing you have to think about. God does not call you because of your ability. As you move forward into his purpose, he will add ability to ability. He will enable you. Whereas the person who finds it easy, they might get up, pass the first test, go on forward, uh, get their credential, and boom, they're already in the driver's seat. They're off and flying forward while you're still put putting along, struggling, trying to retake a few classes because you're struggling intellectually somehow is just not jiving with you. But remember this. When God has you purposed for something, you don't have to be a genius in that area. The area where you, where you will shine, <clears throat> excuse me, the area where you will soar and, and excel will be the area that God wants to use you once you get the credential. So the struggle is not there to determine how well your success will be. The struggle is just a means to an end. You just keep struggling until you get past it. Don't give up. You have to be tenacious. You have to be, you have to have, um, Oh, I can't think of the word now. I used it before in the other video. But you have to push. You have to press in. You cry through it. You pray through it. You pry your way over that wall. But you get over the hurdle. You get over that hurdle and you move to the next step. I don't care if you have to have 10 tutors. You do what you got to do. Because there's something God wants you to handle. When you get to that certain level... Well, you get that credential in your hand. You may not work for the big corporate companies that the other person who excels so quickly is doing. You may not make a six or seven figure income. You may only make a five and a half figure. I'm being facetious on that. But what God will do in your life and in other people's lives as a result of you taking your place in God's purpose will speak volumes over whatever that other person, the other person, all they may show for their success is what's in their pocket. But what God uses you to do may count eternally in ways that you can't even fathom right now because of a heart and the spirit God has placed in you. And what you're doing is out of your passion that God put in you. Not out of your smarts. Not out of you being sly, slick, and wicked. No, it's out of your passion. That's what God will anoint. That's what God will put his hand to. So don't compare yourself with them. Let them fly on. That's fine. That's their business. You handle what God put inside of you. As God told Moses when Moses said, hey, I stutter. How can you have me talk to Pharaoh? I stutter. I'm, 
I'm, I'm just not qualified. And God said, what is that in your hand? And what he had in his hand was an old raggedy stick, a rod that he, that he herded the sheep with. It wasn't anything fancy. But guess what? God used that little raggedy yard, that raggedy stick. I'm feeling this right now. God used that raggedy stick to part the ocean, to part the sea, and let Israel cross on dry ground. He worked tremendous miracles. He tapped the rock and the rope, the rock spewed out water. To I mean, God, he worked miracles with that raggedy stick. And God will work miracles through you, even though you think your stuff is raggedy. Even though you think that you're not even worthy of what God is pushing you forward to. That you don't know how you're going to make it because you don't have the brains that they have. But God gave you the heart and the spirit. And you will do all kind of things. And you will cross all, oh, oh my goodness, you will be such a major influence that the other person can't be. They got the pocket, they got the brains, but you got the heart and the spirit of God working in you. And that's what's going to catapult you way beyond. And it's not in figures. It's in God's math. He will look at you and say, well done, good and faithful servant. Don't look at the numbers. Don't compare with them. You go forward in the calling of God. He gave you a heart for it. He gave you a love and a passion for it. Amen. You go for it, baby, because God is behind you 100%. Don't you slack up. You cry through it. You pray through it. But you press until you meet the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in your life. Amen, and God bless you as you push.